Welcome to Social Innovation, the Kaleidoscope, created by the Cambridge Center for Social Innovation. We share the different colors and facets of social innovation around the world. I'm Berenice Pardo. Sol Escobar is the founder of Give Your Best, a free online clothing shop for refugee women. As an immigrant from Uruguay, she recognizes that her journey, which eventually led her to the UK, is seen as adventurous, whereas refugees and asylum seekers are often faced with hatred and rejection. In this episode, she tells us how she's attempting to challenge these double standards by creating a support network of kindness that is worth far more than a piece of clothing. These double standards always, it, nothing, it never really sits right with me. Um, and so I kind of really wanted to do something more. I went to the social ventures weekend that uh, Cambridge Judge Business School offers, which was mind blowing to me because I learned so much during that weekend and it really, really kind of sparked my um, my desire to do even more and go for it. In September last year is when I kind of had the idea of taking that step and putting the project that is now a huge organization called Give Your Best out there. But it basically all started with um, this one household of women who were seeking asylum living in, in Wales that I had connected with and I was uh, helping. And, um, and I remember talking to one of them and, um, and she was saying how they were having a really difficult time um, accessing clothes and accessing basic items such as menstrual products etc because all of the charities were closed because of lockdown and I thought I'll send them some of my clothes um, but then I realized that because there were several women in the house they were all of different sizes so I put a, I put it out there on social media to see if any of my friends or people that I knew had any clothes that we could send to them and the, the response that I got was amazing. I had so many women that I knew and women I didn't know because people started sharing it, um, wanting to donate their clothes. They wanted to donate money. I raised like a thousand pounds in 24 hours, which I used to buy toiletries and menstrual products and kitchen products and things like that for, for these women. Um, but then I also thought I can't really send them all of these clothes without knowing whether they like them or it fits them and so I started thinking of how I could sort of do it in a more efficient and effective way and so I talked to them and I thought if I take photos of the items that I've got and put them on Instagram are you okay to choose what you want and then I'll just send you that one of them said oh but um don't worry about it. it don't go through all the trouble just to do this for us like we don't we're not in a position to say no to anything that you give us because we don't have anything and I remember thinking you know you're going to carry this feeling of not being worth choosing well beyond getting your refugee status because you've been going through a system that is developed to strip you of all your dignity and agency and you know, um, and I thought even just as women, sometimes it's so hard to assert our decisions. And, and I thought if we can do something to give back that um, sense of, you know, that autonomy and start building that agency again, even just one item of clothing at a time, you know, why not? So we tried it out um, on Instagram with, you know, my clothes and a couple of other people's clothes. Um, I put it out to see if anyone wanted to help me out with with what is now give your best. It wasn't even anything then. And six months later, because it's only been six months, here we are. We um we have over four hundred women registered to shop with us. We've received more than three thousand five hundred items of clothing. Our team is fifty five women. Um, it's just yeah, taken over my life. As we were saying, you're an immigrant, I'm an immigrant, and we've been fortunate enough not to suffer as much. Yeah. And being an immigrant is already difficult, even if it's by choice or not. Absolutely, yeah. But if you have to leave your country because you fear for your safety, mm -hmm. it's just, I, it's, I cannot even grasp how hard. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I think, you know, I... I have been told it before, but I rarely get told to go back to my country because I'm white 
and I, I sound English, you know, I could go back to my country if I wanted to, because I wouldn't be in danger. Um, and yet I know a lot of people from, you know, the refugee community or seeking asylum that would love to go back to their country. Um, they don't necessarily want to be here, but they don't have much of a choice. So um, it's, I find the whole thing very unfair. And I think to answer as well, the question of white clothes, um, yes, it all kind of started organically, but I think since then in the way that this has developed, we've realized that clothes were the exactly the right choice and exactly the right item that we could um, that we could use to connect people because I think of give your best as the intermediary between the people who want to donate their clothes more meaningfully than simply taking a bag to a charity shop and then you don't know who is going to buy it or if it's going to end up in landfill because a lot of people don't know that the majority of the clothes you take to charity shops actually ends up in landfill um, and the people who receive those clothes and so I think that for women and I, I'll, I'll specify that we only do uh, women's clothes at the moment um, but I think for women who are sending the, their clothes to another woman knowing that on the other side of the package is a woman that is their same size and that has their same fashion sense but is living in a completely different reality uh, it, it really humanizes the refugee crisis that we see in the headlines because a lot of the time these women are in the same city sometimes they're literally down the road from each other and yet a lot of the host community don't really know what you know this other community's reality is so the connections that have been created through an item of clothing um have been you know have been amazing and have been something that potentially we didn't anticipate at the beginning but it has become a lovely byproduct of what we're doing and something that we really want to emphasize now so we encourage people to you know turn their donation into a gift so that the other person chose it because they liked it and because it's their style and because it's their size and they're going to feel lovely wearing it. People add little uh, chocolates and supportive notes. Um, and one of the things that we um, get most feedback on from the community, the women that are shopping uh, these clothes, are how touched they are by these notes that they receive um, and by the, the love and care that is put into these packages and into knowing that so many volunteers are dedicating their time to making this happen for them. Um, and we have a few women who volunteer from that community that volunteer in our organization as well. Um, for us, it's very important to have them involved in what we do because what we do is for them. In a meeting that we had recently, one of them said something that really struck me in terms of how important it is what we do. And that is that she said that uh, she's still seeking asylum and she has been for, for the past year. And she said that since starting receiving packages from Give Your Best, it, she, it was then that she realized that there were people in this country that wanted her here because the only thing that she had seen up until that moment was hate. I didn't think this was going to be so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. We Don't worry. In our organization, we cry on a daily basis with the messages that we get. Just this, this amazing community that you are creating. Mm. and, and for, Because you, you said in the beginning, they have been stripped of their dignity mm. and they believe that they don't deserve a choice yeah. they don't deserve yeah. support and I cannot imagine how tartic it must be mm. I think that for a lot of them you know is it, they don't see kindness on a regular basis um and so you know they they you know a lot of them tell us that they love expecting the packages that they're going to receive not just because the clothes are beautiful and they really are because our name give your best you know we expect people donating their clothes to give their best um but also because they you know the the whole connotation of what the package brings with it which is that someone cared enough to 
to send that to them because donating your clothes through our service it takes a bit of effort but we want to offer a more meaningful way of doing so and i think that um there's a lot of appetite for that more meaningful sustainable way of giving your pre-loved clothes you know continuing their lives and that that circularity as well since your shop is on instagram i wanted to ask what challenges have you faced especially on social media being such a controversial subject mm. for the most part is um you know is people coming with the what of uh of charitable work where they question why you're helping this group of people instead of this other group of people that actually they are not doing anything to help anyway um and so our answer is you know do you ask, uh, you know, um, any charity that helps children? Why don't they help adults? No, there are charities or organizations that help all sorts of people. So this is the, the group of people that we help. Um, and so, you know, we haven't, we haven't had too many issues in that sense. And I think that we are also, as a, as a team, we very regularly have meetings where we kind of bring back home why we are doing what we're doing what our mission and values are and that really helps us as an organization to respond to any hate or criticisms because we know why we're doing what we're doing and we are unapologetical about being inclusive and about you know being open and about being political even you know we are you cannot say that you know people seeking asylum is not a political issue it is and we are going to speak out about those issues so we are you know we're happy to engage in debate and i think that haters tend to be very loud and supporters are not loud enough sometimes and what we have realized is that the community that we support they see all the hate that they get online and unless we those who support them are equally as loud they're never going to know that there, there are people out there who are actually working to help and to support and to welcome them here so you know that's fine bring it on <laughs> open invitation for all the supporters to be loud <laughs> yeah absolutely we always say that as well you know to to people on social media is you know if you're supporting and you and you are for a course say it and be as loud as people you know who criticize who tend to be for some reason a lot louder <laughs> learning of the day <laughs> yeah <laughs> on my to-do list <laughs> um now that you're talking about uh your meetings and business yes <laughs> so to speak you have this huge team the team has grown very quickly and the more it's kind of like it's got its own inertia so the more it grows the more we do and the more we do the more we realize we can be doing more and we need more people to do more and so <laughs> you know every week we have new people joining the team we have like I said, we started with myself and two or three volunteers um, just trying to figure it out. How how are we going to send items to the women that need it? How are we going? And now we've got, you know, a huge social media marketing comms team, a huge operations team, development team, fundraising, tech, um, all sorts of things. Um, and so but then again, you know, everybody's a little bit obsessed with what we do, which really helps. <laughs> um, and, you know, everyone is really, really passionate about what we do. Um, and it's honestly probably one of the things that has really got me through lockdown <laughs> doing this and meeting all of these people. And I think that is really lovely as well to see now that we've been going on for a few months. We've we have women that have started that started shopping with us like five months ago that continued to shop with us um, and to kind of see that at the beginning they were you know just shopping for the thing they absolutely needed like 
a, a jumper or a, co or a coat so that they wouldn't be cold in winter. And we would have to encourage them to get more things. You know, it was like, you, you know, you can get up to five uh, items a week, choose something that you like, not just that you need and like trying to encourage to shop for themselves rather than just to survive. Um, and to kind of see those same women five months later, like shopping a beautiful dress and sending us a message saying, with, like with them wearing it and they're like I don't have anywhere to wear it but I wear it around the house because it makes me feel nice you know and it's kind of like that progression from you know the essentials to actually feeling good about you know what you wear uh, I think makes a big difference as well it's kind of um, a healing experience yeah and we did we did a live event actually on Instagram uh, and it's our in, on our Instagram page save there um, with one of the women in our community the model for this campaign and also the founder of the of the sustainable brand and and Kemi the uh, our community member she was saying how you know the impact that it has had on her to be able to choose the clothes that she that she feels good in rather than you know receiving whatever uh, or charities have to give she was saying that even for like integration you know she feels like now she can wear beautiful clothes and like she doesn't feel like an outsider anymore looking towards the future mm -hmm. do you have any idea of how you're going to develop give your best in something that is um of course growing as it needs to and mm -hmm creates more impact but also that remains sustainable for all of the volunteers and for you because mm -hmm. having your full-time work it's not sustainable to do two <laughs> full-time jobs at the same time to be honest um we have big plans and big dreams for your best to be honest sometimes we have brainstorming sessions and we just go all out and we're like you know let's just think about what this could become um and i think that under the give your best umbrella there there are so many different things that we could do um to be able to support this the charitable activities that are our main services but you know we would be we we do want to become a self-sustaining social enterprise rather than you know relying on donations for example but i think that what we do if we're talking if we're departing a little bit from this charitable main uh goal that we have and actually moving a little bit onto the the social entrepreneurship side of it i think that we can really play a really important part in the in the circularity and recycling um, kind of side of fashion waste. We would love to have our own pop-up shop as well. When we are allowed to, uh, to have, uh, to meet other people in person, um, we would love to have our shop. We would love to have like our own uh, warehouse space where we can, you know, store uh, a lot of the clothes that, that are sent to us. At the moment, it's all done in our bedrooms and our living rooms. <laughs> Um, but then again, you know, most social enterprises start that way, so I'm not too concerned about that. I think, I think we'll, we'll get there. Thank you to Sol Escobar from Give Your Best. You can find more about the work of the Cambridge Centre for Social Innovation by following our social media. See you next time. <laughs>